How's it going guys? It's Justin. My name is Matthew with Waltz and today we're going to be doing our first video for our Composer Home Training video tutorial series. Today we're going to be working on Composer Pro, but we will normally be working from Composer Home. So today we're going to be talking about the Sonos Players drivers in Control 4, and Matt's going to run us through a couple of basic things to know. So we'll start off with the properties of the driver itself. So depending on where the driver is installed in your system, you will find that you have at least two drivers for a single Sonos player. For me, the first driver that we'll find is the Sonos Network driver. We'll find that in my clouds room where I hide a lot of my other digital clouds that aren't physically in my uh, system. The properties tab for this driver doesn't really have any relevant information other than the driver version. What is going to be relevant for you is the actions tab. First, we have the auto setup, auto power on dedicated Sonos drivers. So any player that is set up to be the audio endpoint for a room, this will then automatically set it as the auto power on that we'll talk more about later. Then we have auto hide dedicated Sonos drivers and other rooms. So if you have multiple Sonos players in your home, you really don't wanna see Sonos master bedroom, Sonos master bathroom, Sonos family room in every single one of your rooms. So it'll only just have the player available for that room. Auto add Sonos drivers is actually a really unique tool for customers as if you add another player or you're just adding this for the first time, you can automatically add all of the Sonos players in your system to your control for system. And then you have request settings. So if you have any changes or names or anything, you can go here and have it updated as well manually. Okay, so just your basic organization, you know, keep it simple. Uh, so that's your actions tab. Correct. Our second tab is gonna documentation and this will discuss more about the players themselves and the properties that they have and what each of those features do. So secondly, now we'll look for a player driver and we'll see that we'll have much more information on the properties tab. The first one that we're gonna go over is in my garage and we'll see there I have the garage Sonos driver at the bottom. Again here, the first thing we're gonna have is the driver version. I want to make sure that these are all relatively the same so that you get the same functions and features across all of the players. Debug mode will allow you to turn on and set um, the Lua so that if you're troubleshooting the system or testing things, you can go to the Lua output and see what the driver itself is doing based off of what you're interacting it with. The progress bar updates will show the Control 4 Navigator, the current status of a song, and you can change the polling rate there at any time. Sonos Room will show the currently selected player. Obviously for the garage, I have my garage player selected. If you need to change a player or move things around, you can also go to the Sonos Room selector and then choose a new Sonos player for that driver. Okay, so if I were to pick up my Sonos One and let's say move it from the garage to the kitchen, I would come here and make sure that it lines up if I wanted to all work together. Exactly. And then on the auto power rooms, this is what we were talking about with the auto power on feature. So if we select the room that we want to auto power on with this Sonos player, if the player is activated outside of Control 4, either through a smart home assistant speaker or the Sonos app, Control 4 will actually update and show you that that player's in use in that room. Override room will allow you to override anything currently playing in that room. This is mostly used for rooms that have sound bars. So if the TV was on and playing um, the TV audio, you can then select music and not worry about interrupting that room. The next property is delay for auto off. This just simply when the player is paused by any means, control four after the given time will then shut that room off and show that it's currently inactive. Okay, so just I'll stop you right there. So let's say you know you accidentally hit the off button on your Sonos One. Uh, you, it wouldn't exactly turn off, so you'd be able to turn it back on. You know, trying to scrub through volume, it could be really easy to press that power button. Exactly, and that way it just doesn't instantly turn off, and then you have to turn it back on in Control Four. Okay. Auto rename driver will allow you to set this so that if you like changing the name of your player in the Sonos app, Control Four will update automatically as you set those names. Auto play when selected basically just means when that player is selected in control four, it's going to say, send a play command so that the music will resume. 
auto select when the icon is pressed is a little bit different in that when you select the Sonos icon in Control 4, it'll automatically resume playing whatever was last on the player. Send pause when not in use, just simply pauses when the player's not in use in Control 4. And then a new feature is sync favorites to media database. This is typically only gonna be used in rooms that are using wakeups and you wanna call a Sonos favorite. You wanna make sure to only enable this player for the players that are using this feature in that room as each player will create identical, unique favorites and you might have a lot of favorites and cause some confusion for yourself if you turn it on on all your players. Okay. So now that we've taken a look at some of the properties and functions of the driver, how do we actually play the music in the Control 4 ecosystem? So the first thing you wanna do is open your Sonos app, select a player, and then select your music service, find a song or album or whatever that you might be looking for, even a playlist. We're just gonna go through here, grab any random title, We'll save here, Dance Monkey, and you wanna make sure to save that to your Sonos favorites. Once that's favorited, or if you create a Sonos playlist, this will now show up in Control 4 and allow you to do some custom programming, or you can select these playlists or songs through the Control 4 Navigator. So whether that be my phone or my iPad mounted to the wall, I uh, have a lot of options now to basically play whatever I created. Exactly. So now that we have the music and or playlist added into our favorites, how do we go about actually playing the music? So there's two options within Control 4. You can do this through your Control 4 Navigator. You'll find this under the Listen tab in your perspective room. And then you'll see the Sonos Player. If you do not have the Auto Hide feature, you'll see the Sonos Player for each of the players that you have in your home. You would simply select the player you'd like to use in that room click on that and there you'll see your Sonos favorites and playlist. Select a song and the player will begin playing and Control 4 will update the navigator and show what's currently playing in that room. If you have Composer Home Edition, then you can go into your programming tab. Here we'll be able to see on a event that you're liking, they would like to use. For me, I typically have a keypad here in the garage. We'll see that I have a configurable keypad that I have three buttons for. On the garage program button, I don't have anything currently, so we're gonna set something up. If you want the fastest response in your programming, the press command is going to give you the quickest response. The problem with this is every time you press the button, that programming is gonna be activated. So if you want to add several different commands or have different functions on that button, you may wanna look into using single tap, double tap, or triple tap. Do note that even the single tap is going to add a, a little bit of a delay just as the Control 4 system checks to see if you're gonna press it a second or third time. For me, I only use my garage uh, for one purpose for the music, and I have the lighting automatically turned on when I enter that room, so we're gonna program off of the press function. On the device action side, we're gonna go find that player, which we'll see the Garage Sonos down here at the bottom and then we'll see that we have device specific commands available to us. We can select a favorite, we can select a playlist, we can send the play button, pause button, play pause button, skip forward, skip reverse, stop, and toggle play mode. Toggle play mode is actually going to give you a few additional options as well as some of the other settings. Here we'll find the mode for repeat, repeat one, shuffle, and crossfade. If you select on any one of those settings, then we'll see we also have a state, which we can then program either an on, off, or toggle, depending on the feature that you're looking for. And what does the state exactly do? State's just going to, if we're gonna do shuffle, and we choose the shuffle on, this will now set the shuffle for the playlist set to on so that it'll shuffle through the music for you. Okay. Today, for this button, I'm looking to add a playlist. So we're gonna go into the device specific commands, select a playlist, click on the pop out box, which will then allow us to choose from the playlist. I would like to add my Matt's Mix uh, playlist to this. And then you're either going to double click on the green arrow, or you can also simply click on it and drag it into the window. So very easy to operate, drag and drop, or you can double click. Correct. And now that we've added this programming, we can simply go to my garage, press the garage button, and as soon as I press it, it's going to automatically select that playlist, and based off my features, it's gonna autoplay and begin playing music in there. Oh, nice. So you walk in your man cave and your music starts playing, you get home from work, 
That's pretty cool. It's a nice setup. By now we've learned how to use our Sonos system with the Control 4 Navigator. We've also added custom programming to our keypad and we now have the tools to automate and customize our home. Before we go, you mentioned something about a bug or some issues you had with Sonos at your home. Can you walk me through what exactly happened and how you went about fixing it? Yeah, so recently I noticed that a lot of my Sonos players weren't automatically playing music when I selected in Control 4. However, my system is a little unique in that I'm using a Sonos Connect as a line in player for my wireless zone players. Then Control 4 is feeding audio directly into that Sonos Connect, allowing me to sync my music across my wired and wireless Sonos zones, as well as my wired triad zones. So what I did, first we're gonna go into the programming tab again. We're gonna find the room that I'm having the issue with, which is my office. From there, we can click on the office drop-down tool as well as the room variables, and we're looking for the power state of the room. Here, we can program off of my office power state changing, so whether that be on or off. Obviously, in this case, we want to program based off of when the room is powered on so that I can engage my Sonos player correctly. So we're going to go to the actions tab, find my office here again, go into the conditionals tab, and find the conditional for when the office is turned on. Here again, we can double click or drag and drop the conditional into the room. Once we have the conditional added, now we need to go find our programming commands. We're going to find my Sonos player in my office, click on the device specific commands, and we need two commands for this to work. I've already added my audio component line in on my home audio Sonos Connect as a favorite into Sonos. Again, we're gonna select all of our options and double click the programming into the system. We also need a play command, as I found in the Sonos app that the players were all paused and not actually playing the music when called for. Now that we have the two commands in there, we need to get them into the correct conditional state because at this current time, they're going to always do this whether the room turns on or off. Doing this, we're gonna click on the arrow and drag it on top of the question mark and we'll see that the icon changes to a arrow pointing to the right. Releasing the mouse button will then drop it into the correct position and now it's going to properly be affected by the conditional that we've added to the power state. We're also gonna do this to the play button and this would work. I personally like to add a little bit of time delay in there for the processor to go through each of these commands and not have them stumble over each other, as well as the other room commands that are happening on power on state that it's supposed to be doing through the driver already. For me, I have found that adding 500 milliseconds works just fine. So we're gonna drop in a delay just before the audio selection and then just before the play button command. Doing this, now I can go into Control 4. I have full access through all of my music services, um, whatever that I wanna use, select a song, change songs, add playlists, and then when I hit play, and now it'll play through the Sonos speaker, even though I'm not using the native Sonos apps or music services in Sonos. Okay, so uh, just a little extra bug if you guys have any problems, try that. And uh, thank you, Matt, for sharing. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, maybe subscribe for more. We are going to be coming out with more of these, um, hopefully in a big bundle of uh, videos. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and visit waltz.com before your next purchase of electronics and ask for a custom YouTube coupon code. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And if you have any questions, leave them below.